what's going on youtube welcome back to the fourth dimension man so good to review another car first things first man hey whether you believe in covid or not please check on your family and your friends man just for the heck of it just check on them text them call them we, what's up mom what's up grandma how you been and we need each other at these times man look out for one another and i wish you all the best i hope you guys have been doing good if you having any problems if you need somebody to talk to just hit me up in the comments man anyway today we have this 2021 kia k5 the lxs trim I'm sorry this guy's trimming down tree branches over here there's a woman well anyway <laughs> kia k5 lxs we're gonna hop right into this review i'm gonna take a ride in this kia k5 and um another part of my intro for my car enthusiasts out there regardless of how you feel or whatever car you have make the best of what you got man forget what everybody else is saying i understand some things can go too far but for the guys that's modding your cars please be careful on the roads please wear your seat belt be careful with your passengers and be mindful of the other drivers but whatever build you got going on let me know hit me up in the comments i would love to see it too and uh respect all builds man as long as you enjoying your ride making the best of what you got i salute you man let's hop right into this review just a few things i forget to forgot to mention about this kia before we hop right into the view i apologize for that uh there's no fog lights i know i mentioned that but also amber leds led headlights they look beautiful i like the design that they use for this there's a small little bulge bulge going up here you got some lines going down it's kind of like a sparkly white pearl you can see it's damn near like a, a V, like a, a flat bottom V, which is wrapping around this Kia logo. And that continues from outer to the outside where they split all the way up here. Oh, this mug is sparkling like a mug, boy. I like how, if you can look at the roof, you know how when someone's upset and they got that middle part and their forehead that's pointed down, that's how the roof is looking, in my opinion. And it follows with this tiger nose grill right here. <laughs> like how the middle part is just, just imagine that's like the forehead, this your mouth and you grinning. <laughs> you just mad at somebody. But that same design, all these lines, these sharp edges, smooth curves and whatnot, follows all the way to the back. Indentions right here, smooth right here. Then it gets sharper at the bottom and also towards the back, right here, where it goes all the way to the light bar. Obviously, the light bar is a little sharp. So that body language, these sharp little lines right here, continues on to the light bar, the trunk lid, so forth and so on. Not only that, but on the interior, I forgot to mention that the seats are manually operated no lumbar support they are not electronic and also steering wheel tilt telescope forward and back but it's only manual so those are a few things i forgot to mention but like i said man the design of this car the interior it, it sticks to what's on the outside it sticks to what's on the inside if that makes sense what's on the outside transverses onto the inside sharp edges these hanging parts, these, these mean interior and exterior qualities. That's all I wanted to show you guys. <laughs> On to the review. I'm pretty excited to be reviewing this Kia, man. It's like my second Kia I ever drove and the first modern Kia I've drove and will be reviewing, obviously. But I'm gonna start things off with the key fob. We got the Kia detonator, mm, the C4 detonator. We got the black around it and the silver or the chrome or whatever. You got your lock button, your unlock button. You have the trunk release, panic button, and you have, press this button, you get the manual key out just in case your battery's dead or whatever. You got your remote start. Only thing about this I don't like is the remote start button's so small. I mess up sometimes, you know. You, you gotta lock it, hold the remote start button. Sometimes my finger just let off of it or it slip or for some reason, I don't know. But that's the only thing I don't like. Make, this, make that button a little bit bigger. I love the, I love how the key fob looks, man. 
You just make it a, make this remote start buttons just a little bit bigger, bro. All you gotta do is hold it again and cut it off. We're gonna start from the back of the car. We got the light bar in the back, rear view camera, trunk release button, K5 LXS. And we got some fake vents back here. Those are only covered up because on the highest trim on the GT, you get the actual exhaust tips back there. The real exhaust tip is underneath. There's only one back here. And you got a small little rear diffuser. The back of it looks great. I love the light bar. I love to look at this car. I love how the, the rear view mirror is. Not the rear view mirror, but the, the rear window is shaped. I love this black, the chrome going around it. To be honest with you, talk about something real quick. We got some black up here on the mirror. Right here on this mirror. So at the front, as you can see, there's not much black. But in the back, there's a little bit more black. You look at the sides, you look at the bottom, you look at the top, you got a little bit more black. So up there, what I'm thinking is, you need a little bit more black up there, Kia. The white color does not do this car justice. It is kind of like a pearl white. If you can see it sparkling. I can see it, but you do have a 15 gallon fuel tank. All you gotta do is unlock the car and press down on it, it'll open up. So I'll show you that real quick. 15 gallon fuel tank, regular unleaded. We have 205 by 65, 16 inch alloy rims. These rims, I can dig them. I have no problem with them. They're, it's a smooth ride, to be honest with you. The car feels very nice. And once you get to the higher trims, you will get 19 inch. But, side profile view ah car looks good man this is a great looking car kia did a very good job i like this i have no problem with this chrome going around here i wouldn't mind it being black either i just i like i said i kind of wish it was black to match the mirror because it just needs a little bit more black up here man you do have like during nighttime you have a little light up in here in the door handle you unlock the door little led light shines up in there i like that little touch to it let's talk about the front of the car man we all know why a lot of people love this car let me see if i can them amber lights right there man and those are your turn signals man when i be i turn on the turn signal at nighttime it'd be so bright i'd be like oh my god i can I can see what's on the other side of the street. These turn signals so doggone bright. I love the front profile of this car. This car is so aggressive. This is probably like the top 10 cars, the most aggressive looking cars, in my honest opinion. It looks great, man. Kia did a really, really, really good job with this car. And coming from their history, I think they've come a very, very long way. I can do nothing but commend these guys for the looks and the performance and improving on reliability. The only problem that you might have with a Kia or a Hyundai is the engine. They have that, I think they have a recall going on with their engines. The only thing is that they should look at Toyota or Nissan or somebody. When it comes to oil consumption, how did they fix those problems with the older Camrys? How did Nissan fix their problem with their V6s? consuming too much oil and what else Hyundai and Kia have this thing of the engine shutting off like the engine failure that's the other problem there's, there's like the two main problems you'll have with a Hyundai and the Kia but like I said I haven't heard any problems from anybody or anybody close to me I haven't really read much it's not like it's a, a rare occasion I'm not gonna say that but they would fix those two main problems i think the oil problem has been fixed honestly but if they would fix the other problem these cars would be perfect man i like the white coat on here even though it doesn't complement this car as well as the other colors it's, it's the pearl white it's the sparkly white that's getting me man these headlights effing beautiful they're beautiful man they, they shine so bright the leds are so bright we do have some real vents up in here which is beautiful talk about the grill it is closed off on the sides but in the middle it is open up same thing for the lower part it looks great it's a lot of plastic a little bit of rubber at the bottom i'm looking at the headlights this is boy them headlights is nasty this is a nasty little car man it's 
a nasty little car. We're gonna pop the hood, we're gonna talk about some of the specs. So moving on to the engine we have for this Kia K5 LXS. Got his 180 horsepower, 1.6 liter four cylinder gasoline direct injection turbo. Give me all a quick look at it. You do got a lot of space up in here, man. Always like to look at how easy would it be for someone to change the headlight bulb, which looks really easy, man. Got a big battery up there. Nice size engine. Higher trims, you get a 2.5 liter. The highest trim, you get the 2.5 liter, 290 horsepower. Like I said, this is only making 180 at 5,500 RPM. Zero to 60 in about 8.6 seconds. Overall length, have 193 inches. Eight speed automatic front wheel drive. For your trunk space. Just pop the trunk real quick. Show you guys what you're getting. Got about 15, 16 cubic foot trunk space. It's not a big trunk. That's what you would think, right? But those are two Memphis 10 subwoofers in the back. Obviously, it's not hooked up. It's just to give an example of how much space you'll have up in here. That does fit perfectly in there. You do have some other things in here. There's a nice size trunk. You do get a spare tire and a jack. 180 horsepower, 195, 195 pound feet of torque. 16 inch. 16 cubic foot of space in the trunk. Backup camera, one exhaust tip, 1.6 liter engine. This is a great car for around the price. I'm gonna tell you why the price is so good when I show you the features that you're getting with this. A lot of work room under the hood. No prop rods, hydraulic rods up in there. Great looking design to this car. In the back seat, show you the headroom, count the speakers, you know how it go. So, one thing I really enjoy about this car is the smoothness. Everything is either hard click or it's just smooth. From the door handles to the interior door handles, we're gonna listen to this close. Nice soft close. Smooth and soft. I'm gonna do a hard slam. Everything's insulated properly. There's no extra rattle in the trunk from not being insulated with the, with the sound bar. And you got your map pockets back here. Driver and passenger. No USB ports, no AC in the back. But got some nice speakers. We got some okay sounding speakers. They're not horrible. They're nice. They're not horrible. They're just nice. We have six speakers set up. We have a basically a sound bar in the back. That's what I'm gonna call it. Because the length of it. I mean, it's a speaker, but it's shaped like a sound bar. We got one, two, three, four, five, and we have six right behind the infotainment screen. We got two tweeters on the left and right driver passenger side. We have this black interior with like a beige top or off-white top. Halogen bulbs up here, front and back. We do have LEDs for the headlights. I forgot to say that. The headlights are LEDs. There are no fog lights. And we have a lot of space back here. Seats do fold down 60 40. That's about it for the back seat. We got your some storage down here. I don't think you, you can't really fit a cup up in there. It says you can. But if you do, it's going to be slanted. Same thing for that side. We do have a closed area right here. You can fit a few things right here. We don't have a handle. We have a slight hinge, hump, heel right here. You can kind of relax right here. I don't mind it. It feels good, you know. It's a nice little snap right there. We got some nice, nice feeling interior. Very nice. This is hard touch. Hard touch plastic. We got some soft touch down here. We have a bunch of hard touch up here. Other than that, or to touch on the seats, everything else is just fine back here. And how many cup holders do we have? 
not that. Two cup holders back here. We have two up there, two right there, and probably fix something small over there where the wet wipes are. So, you got a lot of space up in here. You honestly have a lot of space. So, tell me, let me know how you guys like this Kia K5 so far. It's, it's pretty nice up in here, to be honest with you. I love the interior. I love how it feels up in here. Like I said, I'm going to show you more things at the front. Everything is like, it's either soft or it's nice and clicky. Let's walk to the front real quick. It's more about the design of this. It's nice and clicky. Door handle, nice and clicky. Nice and clicky, man. I don't know if I can show you guys the LED light that's up in there. You can't really see it. But they do have black on the inside. Then there's an LED light that lights up in the nighttime. Got your K5 right here in black. Nice little speakers. Close the door, see how it sounds. Nice and solid, man. This, you know what I'm saying? The build quality, or should I say the initial build quality is great. I don't want anybody to be like in a comment saying I had a Kia and it's trash and blah 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 the initial build quality is great right so more storage space up here a little bit longer soft touch plastic up here we got some soft touch right here glossy not necessarily gloss but it's not matte either but this black and the silver does complement each other it really does we have one touch automatic only for the driver's side you do not have now the cars usually have a lock and unlock switch right here you don't have that in here you just had a button you had a button to lock and unlock it got your mirror controls got your dashboard dimmer we have the traction control trunk release hood release lane departure assist sun visors collisions up here look at this that's cool. That's cool. I like it. Halogen. 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 Like I said, you got the two sweeters up there. You got the speaker in the middle. You got some nice interior space up in here. You have a little cubby right here. You have your drive mode selector, park and brake, auto hold for when you're in a drive through or something, or stop and go traffic. You don't have to hold down the brake, you just press auto hold. It'll hold the brake for you, let you fit off the brake and do whatever you need to do real quick, but please be careful with it. Please pay attention. 12 volt cigarette lighter port adapter, USB and charging. This USB is for Apple CarPlay and Apple and Android CarPlay. I forgot what Apple calls it, but anyway. <laughs> Android CarPlay, Apple CarPlay, whatever. You got your charging port as well. So this does have wireless and wired Android Auto. Android, Apple, Auto, whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we got your hazards. This is one thing I really like. I don't know why I like this for the AC vents. It has these little ridges up here. It looks really nice. The AC feels nice too. We got your gauges. Steering wheel. I'm gonna go from left to right, if you haven't noticed. We got your turn signal stock headlight stock, windshield wiper stock. We have automatic high beams. We have voice control, change your modes for the, for the radio. Radio volume, station, next song, call, in call. Nice steering wheel. It's not the D-shaped or the flat bottom steering wheel like the higher trims have. We have the cruise control options, lane departure assist, have warning and assist and we have the thing that this goes to the pages for the the dashboard radio sounds decent eight inch infotainment screen dual climate controls ac feels nice as i said i like the way these buttons are set up they feel nice to press it's nice to look at everything like i said every button you press up in here feels good it's nice it's either nice and clicky or it's nice and smooth and I love that. This is the only problem that I've seen people have with this car is the gear selector. It's 
why is it so thick? It should be nice and thin, but it feels nice to press. It feels nice to move. I'm not gonna lie to you. Drive mode feels nice. We have interior storage right here. There is not a cigarette lighter port adapter, adapter up in there, but it's it's a nice size. You can put a few things up in here. These, this this flies would be on the car with me. I don't know why, but glove box. It's not very deep. It's honestly not very deep, but you can fit some stuff up in there. So I got some gloves and some a few paperwork up in there. So. I'm gonna start the car. I'm gonna show you a few things. I'm gonna let this fly out actually. One thing I do like, I don't know why I like it, and I don't know if it's actually checking anything. Turn it down real quick. Turn it, turn that down real quick. System check. I don't know why I like that. Has a nice little chime to it. Like I said, I'm gonna let the fly out. Turn the AC down. <clears throat> so Dashboard controls, parking brake, electronic parking brake. We have, let me turn it on for you real quick. This button is to control, I mean you up here. We got your brake time basically. If you've been driving for a long time, you need to take a break. The uh, car will give you a notification. Go to the next page. Open up the settings for it. We have driver attention, which is the brake time. We got the forward safety, letting you know that if you're not paying attention for whatever reason and you're at a red light and the car in front of you starts to move, the car will let you know. The only thing, only safety feature this car does not have is parking sensors. It literally has everything but parking sensors has the airbags in the front, airbags on the side. It has the lane departure warning, lane departure assist. It has forward collision warning, rear collision warning, cross traffic alert. It literally has everything except parking sensors. Blind spot safety. See, parking safety, it only has rear cross traffic alert. It doesn't have parking sensor keep hitting something. I'm gonna go to the next page. Time you want to, how long you want the lights to stay on? You got door chimes, auto unlock, we got a smart trunk. Welcome sound. It sounds pretty cool. Okay. So we're gonna finish going through the menus. Um, wrong button. <laughs> uh, we got theme selection. We got other. Look at your tire pressure. Look at your fuel economy theme selection just changes the color of the background we only have three themes change it for a little bit you can reset everything i'm gonna move on to the next menu got your tire pressure menu we have your how fast you're going we got your fuel economy As you can see this thing is pretty high it's doing a pretty good job accumulated info your drive info and you have your smart mode this is for the drive mode selector so right now you have i've been leaving it on smart and it's been doing a really good job so if you floor it it's going to go into sport mode if you don't floor it you're going to stay in eco or if you if you like mid-range throttle like 50 percent you're going to be in normal mode so the next menu just the car driving it down a fake road and onto the infotainment you do have android auto you don't have navigation or anything like that apple carplay that's the name of it i forgot the name of it that's bad um <laughs> going through the menus apple carplay android auto got the user manual you can turn the screen off if you want we're gonna go through the setup real quick <clears throat> device connection you got vehicle settings you do have a custom drive mode this is gonna let you when, when you put it in custom as you can see when I change the drive mode I do like looking at this it's very basic it's very simple but I like looking at it you got sport and we have custom custom is going to let you change your drive train and your steering and stuff to normal or sport there's not many options you know this isn't the bigger engine 
and you can change it to where if you want it more detailed like it is or if you want it more simple i like the detailed so we're gonna leave it at that um bluetooth audio phone we can turn the display off we have a custom button this is what this is for custom or favorite when you press that it's going to go to that menu right now it's tied to the bluetooth audio you press the mode button on the steering wheel this is also what it's going to go to so i'm going to tie that to bluetooth audio as well in your general settings we got software update system information to have an internal storage of 128 gigabyte megabytes excuse me change your gps date and time like i said you don't have navigation in this tram but you get some nice settings some fairly nice settings you can change the display you have a blue light filter screen saver and rearrange the home icons and extend rear camera use that is for so like when you go in reverse backup camera looks great right it's a really nice backup camera it does have trajectory and all of that so what you can do is go to your settings change the brightness and everything else you can also change how the camera is looking straight down instead of the wide angle that is set to put it straight down but when you go to extend backup camera use put it back in park the rear camera view is displayed regardless of the gear that you're in so put the rear camera in then you put it in drive the backup camera is still on there until you reach about 20 mph it's going to go back to this screen right here like i said you can turn the display off you got device connection so forth and so on and that's about it for this you got the user manual if you don't really need but and a QR code for that. Come on. Give me some small information up in there, you know? Just going through some of the icons up in here. I'm not going to connect the phone. Go back to the menu. We can edit the icons right there. And that's about it for that infotainment. Like I said, this is the lower trim. So there's not much in here for it. But once you get to the higher trims, you'll have more customization options you'll have a heated steering wheel as an option sun you'll have the heated and ventilated seats for the driver and passenger rear usb ports all sorts of other knickknacks and features you can if you can get your hands on a kia gt matter of fact kia if you can get your hands on a kia gt and send me one i would not mind messing around with it send me any kind of kia kia you feel me kia like i wouldn't mind driving a kia and reviewing a kia to post it on my youtube page or posting it somewhere <laughs> no nah, i'm kidding i would i honestly truly would like to review another kia whether it be a k5 or a forte or anything else but it's hard to get your hands on these cars let alone just review them and drive them all this other stuff but all these blank switches once you go up to the higher trim, yes, all of these are filled in. Yes, you get heated, ventilated seats, you get type C, you get rear AC, not AC controls, but rear vents, sunroof, more horsepower, more torque, more stylish looking K5, more color options, heated steering wheel, flat bottom steering wheel. Like the higher trim of this car is so appealing for the price. The car itself is already very appealing for what it is even though this isn't even the lowest trim but the lowest trim is already very very appealing this is like the one after the lowest one and the mid-range trim is like basically the gt line which comes with almost everything the gt does but not quite but i love this car i'm gonna we're gonna talk about how it drives in a second and switch it back to smart i'm right into this drive one thing I forgot to point out, the seats are manual. They're not electronic or anything like that. And there's no lumbar support. So that would be like the only downfall of this is that, you know, your lower back is kind of just, uh, but it's not that bad of a drive, you know? And that being said, let's get into this test drive. It's gonna get real bumpy up in here.
adjust this. There we go. That's a lot better. Which way you want to go? Like I said, everything about this car is like, it's either smooth or it's really clicky. I like the turn signals. I like the windshield wiper stock. I don't know what it is. It's just something about this car that really, you know, gets me off. No, nah, I'm kidding. It's something about this car that's really smoothing and satisfying. Let's try left. Like, listen to that. That that turn six was nice and calm. <clears throat> I've been testing a few features up in here while I've been driving it lane departure assist lane departure warning and all that works perfect it works great and i've also tried it going along curves not hairpin turns anything like that but like slight curves or sort of like roundabouts and stuff and it's done great it's done a really good job and i don't know i can't stress this enough that this car but this brand in general has really, really, really improved on a lot of things. And it's great. Look at the price, man. People think it's cheaper because it's less re reliable or it's a piece of crap. That's not the case, man. That is far from the case. The reason why it's so cheap is because look, if you look around, if you pass by a few things or if you Google Hyundai, is stocks and the equipment, the stadium, Hyundai has so many things that they own and they manufacture most of their own steel and stuff like that other other brands don't really do that you know they most of the stuff done by hyundai is like in-house i'm not saying your camry isn't built in-house but for hyundai and kia it's like the steel the aluminum all of that in-house you know like it's just cheaper makes the vehicles cheaper car has a nice weighty sound to it sounds aggressive like I said I don't know if you saw it right there but it does it did switch from a uh, smart to sport then it's gonna drop down to normal and then yeah let's make this left right here and then go back to eco once you're done driving like a maniac can see my list of complaints is very very small with this car i think it's good to drive cars that are that have a few miles there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with driving a car that is brand new and reviewing it while it's brand new but driving cars that have certain miles on them to show that this car has been put through some tests and everything in here is still smooth and clicky feels nice i think that tells a lot to the person that's watching the video also the same thing for the dodge avenger that I reviewed. The thing has 200,000 some miles on it and the only thing wrong with it is the parking brake. And it's a Dodge Avenger of all things. The last Dodge that you would expect to last that long. You had the Cadillac. Nobody, everybody knows the North Star V8 is a bad engine. And that thing lasted over 200,000. 200,000 miles, man. You wanna turn this off? All the kids in school, right? I know they are, I know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. Engine has some nice umph to it, man. You can tell when a turbo kicks in, you get a slight turbo whistle. I can hear it with the windows rolled up and that AC going, because me in Texas is obviously very, very hot. I just can't wait to see what people do with this car in the aftermarket. You know, this is a brand new car. Same thing with the Kia Stinger. Same thing with the Elantra and the Sonata. It's just like, it's so early on. Hyundai and Kia are one of the only ones that have actually put the actual wheel horsepower. Like the Sonata inline is like 290 horsepower. 
you go look at a video of some people dynoing it and it's at 290 horsepower at the freaking wheels dyno a maxima or something is it 219 and it's supposed to be 300 and one thing i gotta commend them for like also people think the hundred hundred thousand mile five-year warranty is like a joke or is it 10-year one i don't remember so like why don't i think they need to get out of that three-year warranty that five-year warranty whatever warranty that everybody else is doing i think they need to stop that and increase the number because come on man come on like hyundai and kia been caught up to you guys and they're offering more at a cheaper price and most of the time we're only buying cars because of what our parents told us and brand loyalty sometimes you have to venture out and figure out what's good for you or what's good period i'm not saying toyota and lexus are bad brands i know they're great i know Ford is great i know chevy can be great i know nissan isn't as bad as everyone says but increase the warranty man we trust in y'all we trust in y'all with our right now i'm just ranting <laughs> while i'm enjoying this drive if i'm ranting about you while i'm driving if i'm ranting about something while i'm driving that means it's a good drive man <laughs> if it wasn't a good drive i'd be complaining but this is a great this is a really honestly a great car it feels good to drive it it has the power it's able to put down the power the only problem is when you up the tram to get the gt you don't get the limited slip differential so it's hard for it to catch some power to the wheels it doesn't do a good job of putting the power down to the wheels other than that this car is great man i'm gonna end this drive because <laughs> i've just been running and driving around and basically burning gas we're gonna do the pov video obviously i just did a whole lap basically i did a whole lap around a nerve ring but truth be told i love the steering man i love the steering i love how it can put the power down it doesn't sound bad everything in this car is like when you look at the price that you're paying it's really worth it it is really truly worth it i'm gonna catch you guys in the pov video thank you guys for tuning in peace out